Hey everyone, welcome back to another design tutorial in Adobe XD and today we'll be designing these drag animations in XD. As you can see, if I'm dragging like this, the volume or the slider is moving up. I'll put it back now and if I drag al along this, it will basically bring out the volumes or the levels from left to right. If I say just two or four or six or seven and if I bring it back, it just vanishes or goes back and uh, for this it's more like a side menu so or a um, model which you can pull out so if i pull it out a little bit see how it just uh, comes back just like a jelly so i really like that this is my personal favorite before we begin with the tutorial go down in the comments and tell me which one of these three is your favorite is it one is it two or is it three go now write that in the comments so to start off, I will start off with an, uh, a simple artboard. Let me start off with an artboard which is, um, say, 1600 by 1600, which is fine. And I will start off with a uh, area where I'll be designing, which will represent an iPhone screen. So what we're going to do is, first of all, create a, a simple ellipse, that's it, which should be slightly smaller than the rectangle, of course and uh, we want to give this a gradient and for that we will say from go from solid color to linear gradient and top to bottom is fine so at the bottom we will give a much darker black at the top we will give something which is not black but you know slightly grayed out something like this right and we will pull the lower black section down a little bit so that our our gray section spreads out a little bit towards the bottom Perfect. Um, the next thing that we'll do is just duplicate this and give this a border, which will be a gray border, something like this. And the border size will be eight pixels, or we can even give this 12 pixels, perfect. And as you can see, the, there's different border styles. There's outer stroke, there's inner stroke, or center stroke. I'll, I'll try to give this a center stroke and uh, everything else can remain the same. I'm just gonna give them certain changes and I'll decrease the size of this circle a little bit and remove the fill all together. So I will make this the border and for this, I'll just reduce the opacity of the circle to 25. Perfect. And um, as you can see, the lighter sections, the gray really pops out, but in the darker sections, it doesn't. I can reduce the opacity even more to from 25 to 15 to give that uh, that gradient effect more. Perfect. Now inside here, I will place a text which will indicate the number. So right now we want 01 and the text family is or the font family is DS digital. I will give all the links and the XD file in the description if you want to use that. And uh, I will just increase the size of this. So let's go to 150 for this one. Perfect. And we'll put this in absolute center. And to give this a glow effect, what I'm gonna do is go to the shadows of this text. And I'm not gonna give this any Y or X coordinates. I'll just say zero on both. And the blur I'll give about 25. And we can increase it to even 50 if you want. And we'll change the shadow color. We'll just use the color picker inside the shadow selection and go to this blue and change it to blue. See how it's now a glow shade. I like this. I'll keep it just like this. Now, uh, the next thing that we need to do before we do anything else is change the background color of this. So ne next thing we'll do is actually create the indicators that we placed around as a circle, right? So we'll create a simple indicator like this. Uh, make it slightly smaller. Um, perfect. I'm not giving any fixed dimensions. You can make uh, them bigger or smaller depending on your uh, preference. And I'll give this a 100 uh, pixel or 100 point border radius. Perfect. That just makes the border completely circular. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the color to this blue that we had selected for uh, the glowing part right here. Perfect. And what I'm going to do is quickly just duplicate this a couple of times, right? Just just quickly duplicate this, um, say, 20 times, right? Okay, so I'll lock the background uh, by saying Command L or Control L. And I've copied this 20 times, as you can see here. And um, I will go 
to the plugins panel and I have a cool plugin which is called Ranger for XD and this is one of my favorite plugins in an XD of all times. It's free of cost and it allows you to arrange anything in a pattern. So it could be a circle, it could be a grid, or it could be a, even a wave. But for here, we'll choose the circle. Let's give this first of all width of 500, the circle, and height of 500 as well. And um, this, is, this is about all right, but we have to make this much bigger. So let's make this 800 by 800 right and as you can see we've placed these perfectly i've given all of these uh a plus 15 degrees uh you know a rotation and at the end i've also given these red uh colors as well so basically we'll just reduce the opacity for a couple of these uh, for basically everything but the first one so reduce opacity to say um what 25 percent Perfect. And um, I will now change the background. So since this is almost done, we'll change the background color. Give this a very similar gradient to what we had given the earlier circle. So this one, right? We change the gradient from black and uh, goes to this uh, grayish hue. Perfect. So uh, the background should be slightly similar to what this circle is. So I'll unlock this circle and then I'll make sure thing is unlocked. And here I want to create a triangle. So I'll go ahead, select the triangle or the polygon tool from the left. You can select this, uh, there's this triangle, just select it and just create a triangle like this and make sure it's big enough. Yeah, perfect. And I'll rotate this, give it this, a similar gray gradient uh, or just a similar uh, gray color as this right here. And I'll put it right behind the circle. Mm. Okay, it's still not behind the circle. Perfect. So right now it's uh, essentially not in the center. So make sure it's in the center of the circle. One more thing that we got to make sure of is that it's masked. So we'll create another circle around this, which is which essentially covers the area of these indicators on the side. And what I'll do is I'll place it in with this triangle that we made and select both the triangle as well as the bigger circle. So the triangle as well as the bigger circle and I say command G, control G to group these. What I'll do is also select the circle and reduce the opacity of just the circle, not the triangle. Uh, now our design is almost ready. So let's try this out. I say command D, I can just copy this artboard. And in the second state, what I'm going to do is rotate just the outer masked circle so that the triangle rotates along with it. And I'll put this uh, on the second indicator, which will then uh, increase in opacity completely. And um, I'll change this 0, 01 to 0, 02. Perfect. And I'll try then place this in the center. Sometimes when you change the digits, it does change the width or the position as well. So just for this, for these, what I'm going to do is prototype this, uh, click on the outer circle, which is actually rotating, make sure. And I say, uh, click on the arrow, drag it out to the second artboard, say auto animate from transition, say auto animate, say tap. And I want this to be um, easing out, but we'll change the tap to drag, right? Uh, so easing will also change. We'll say ease in out on the easing as well. So uh, let's try this out now. So if I just drag the circle and rotate it, see how it changes to two. And I can even do this for like all these numbers up to 10, 12, 100, whatever you like, and it will be pretty, pretty cool. Okay, for the second effect, I'll have a similar artboard and a similar mobile screen uh, looking mockup here. And in the middle, I'll just create this rectangle with a slightly darker color, uh, darker color version of this. Uh, darker shader, dark, darker shader, darker shade of uh, this background color, right? And for here, what I'll take is one rectangle, first of all, which is a wee uh, width with, the, with this kind of width, which is about uh, 160. And uh, I'll change the border for sure. I'll remove the border and I'll change the border radius as well. So if I click on these uh, dotted borders, I can change each border individually. So for the first one, I want to have 50. 
uh, let's check out this. So for the first one, I want 45. Uh, and for the last one, I want 45. So the ones on the left edge or the left vertices will change, right? And I want to give this, uh, this very subtle uh, washed out purple right here. Perfect. And inside this, I want to put in text, which will basically indicate the level. And I'll change the font to Cerebri Sans for this one. Reduce the font size, of course. Change it to about 60, I guess. Yeah, 60 is fine. And I'll give this a slightly darker uh, color as compared to this purple. So just put it on the spectrum and make this slightly darker. Perfect. Now here, what I'm going to do is duplicate this one and I'll just remove all these borders, make sure there's zero on all these ends. And uh, I will then put this number in between as well of this and change it to zero too for sure. And I will drag and I'll just select both of these and say repeat grid. And I'll drag these, uh, you know, handles forwards until I make these and I'll make sure that there's zero pixel spacing between each one of them. And at the end, I'll just say ungroup grid. And at the last one, I'll just give it, uh, you know, I'll just select this rectangle and give this a border radius of, on, the, on both of these edges, I'll give a border radius. So 45 in the middle uh, for both of these in the middle. Perfect. And, um, I will also change the number. So from zero to, I'll give it zero three and so on and so forth. So I'll just quickly teach you how to create the color steps for that. I'll, for the last rectangle, I'll give this, uh, this pink that we had given, which is a slightly darker pink. And I'll give this, uh, a white color for the font as well. And I'll just select all of these together and, uh, just shift them a little bit in. Yeah. Now, what we're going to do is, first of all, we'll ungroup these rectangles if they're grouped and uh, just select only the rectangles, not the numbers at all. And select all of these, go to the plugins panel again, um, go back to the plugins panel. And here I have a plugin called Color Blender. It's free of cost again. And if I click on Color Blender, it just blends the two colors to extreme colors. And here we can see there are steps which have been created. So after say three, I'll say, I'll give all of these white colors so that there's more visibility of the text. No, now uh, for the next step, we will give, we will just create another rectangle, which is, which are the same border radius of 45. And I will just go back to the, uh, to the assets panel or to the layers panel. And I will select all of these till one. And I'll say command shift M to mask this. Now this is a mask. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the last number as well as this rectangle and place it uh, right next to the, uh, we'll, pray, we'll basically place it extremely to the left like this. But since this is a mask, you really can't see it to the left like that. And um, we'll place this one cl uh, slightly closer and we'll place the fourth one essentially. Oops, I'll select this again, no issues. And I'll place this uh, slightly, you know, the, the more distance from this. And uh, as we bring this in, we want less and less distance to, uh, for the cards to travel. So the first card will actually travel very little distance, just like this. And as you can see, these are layered on top of each other. We just want them to be below each other, right? So uh, zero 02 and we'll go zero 03 uh, uh, extremely at the bottom, zero 04. Uh, even below that and we just want to make sure that they're below each other. Uh, there's a shortcut for that. We say command shift and uh, curly brackets left. <clears throat> so if I say curly brackets left, it'll go to the bottom right here. Perfect. And um, so once I've dragged out this uh, dummy rectangle here, just for the sake of it, we'll go to prototype and for this one, we will just uh, select the outermost rectangle, which is our drag trigger and just move this triangle to move this arrow to the second artboard, say drag, auto animate and ease in out is fine. So let's try dragging this out now. So if I drag this out, see how all these numbers get dragged out and all of these are below each other. 
So this is a cool little slider kind of animation. So I think the last one is the simplest of them all. All we need to do is create a rectangle, which will indicate to the user that you have to pull this to actually activate this. And we'll just give the bottom left and the top left uh, corner border radius of say 100 and uh, the last one as well, 100, perfect. And I'm not gonna put all the icons and everything here, I'm just gonna show you the effect. And we'll use the pen tool basically, just click on P and we'll basically create uh, a section here, which is a rectangle here towards the end like this, right? And as you can see, I'm just putting it like that. Just follow me. And um, I'm just gonna give these uh, a border. We're gonna double click on these anchor points to give them like this curve, right? Just give a curve just like this. And same for this one, I'm just gonna give a curve just like that. Uh, as you can see, I'm just creating a quick curve. And for the top one as well, I'm just gonna give a quick curve just like this. Quick curve inwards, perfect. And I'll give this, uh, remove the border and give this a fill, which is the same fill as this color here. Make sure it's at the bottom below this rectangle. And I will duplicate the this uh, artboard kind of thing and I'll just place this above just this um, effect here and say Command Shift M to basically mask it. And uh, for the first thing, I'll just drag these, the ones uh, which are inwards uh, behind this mask so that you really can't see anything. Perfect. In the second artboard, what I'll do is drag this out just halfway through, not completely, and I'll bring this, all these anchor points back in where they belonged, just like this. As you can see, I'm just dragging it out just like that. And also this one at the top too. And uh, just make sure that it's placed perfectly just like that. Yeah. And uh, I'll create another duplicate of this. And for this one, I'll just bring this one, uh, this rectangle to completely left. And I'll drag these out to the left as well. But this time what I'm gonna do is drag them out more towards the left. And this time I'm just gonna bring these in so that we create sort of like a, a rectangle right here. And um, also place, uh, I'll also increase the number of anchor points here and just pull this right here. So now this is, uh, this is an actual area that we can put something in. So to prototype this, I'll click on this rect inner rectangle. Um, and since I'm dragging this out, I'll click the arrow to the second artboard, say drag auto animate is in out. And for the second one, I'll just select the entire artboard uh, and drag the arrow to the third artboard and say uh, time for the trigger, zero seconds is in out and 0 0.6 seconds. So let's select this. So if I drag this rectangle uh, halfway through, you can see me dragging. And if as soon as I leave this drag, it'll just auto animate in place. How cool is that? So if you like today's tutorial, go ahead and give this video a huge thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel. We're growing this channel and we have to reach 10,000 by the end of this year. Let's see if you guys can do that. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon right next to it as well. And I'll see you guys every Monday and Thursday. God bless.